live, oh, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have the link. It's on Facebook. You can just copy and paste it from Facebook. We are live. Hello. Wow, look how creepy my my brother's hand looks. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> I refuse to watch TYT or MSM do this. Hey, Carmen. Haven't seen you in one of these in quite some time. So, um, it'd be cool if we had, you know, a bunch of callers talking to. First of all, first and foremost, did everybody vote? If you didn't vote, I'm kicking you out of the live stream. I didn't vote. You're out. Is hit and well, hello, John You're out, sorry. I don't know why I didn't go vote. Uh, okay, so else. CNN has it 35-31 for the House and 42-31 uh, for the Senate. Fox News has it 19-28 to for the House for uh, the Democrats. So it's a 78% probability right now that the uh, Democrats are going to have control of the House and then a 56% probability that the Republicans are going to have control of the Senate. Yes. And a 100% probability that we're going to be in a divided country, as usual. So the Libertarians lost again. Yes, the Libertarians lost. So what do you guys think? Everybody's basically been saying that the Democrats are going to take the House and then um, that the Republicans are going to hold the Senate. Nail biters in Florida. See, right now they've got it tied. Uh, so CNN has the house tied at 35 35, and then Fox has it 28 22. So it's, it's weird. It's a strange, strange situation. <clears throat> What's the talking point? The talking point is here's my thesis the elections today really aren't going to change anything. I'm not saying that. You shouldn't vote. I'm saying that the elections today aren't going to materially change anything. So if you disagree with that, call in and uh, we can chat. Why do you think that? You don't want to say until the person calls in? I think that Trump is so much of a... Look, they, they still have the Senate. And Trump is so much of a... Uh, there, there's no political capital... See, usually previous presidents, there was a lot of political capital because they were worried about getting reelected and they were worried about how they were. So there was a lot of like compromise that had to be made and things mm -hmm. like that. Trump isn't like that. And so I just feel like that there really isn't materially much that's going to change. Hmm. Um, but if somebody thinks otherwise, let me know. I wrote myself a <laughs> mystery. You wrote yourself in. <laughs> Elections will change some local policy, not so much national. Right. Did Peter show up? Is Peter here? I'm deaf fan. Yes, he's deaf a phenomenon. Oh, we got Flanagan. <laughs> Flanagan, my good man. You gotta turn you get you gotta turn down your thingamajig, my guy. Hey, what's up, brother? My good man. What's up, brother? What's up? Uh, not a lot. Just uh, laying here, hanging out, watching uh, the results on uh, on the the laptop and stuff, trying to see you know what I get, you know, accurately. Anyway, I, I guess it's a waiting game. All in all, well, CNN right now has the House tied, and Fox has it pro Republican, right? No, Fox. <laughs> no, Fox is saying that the Democrats are like well in the in the lead, which of course now I see the logic, right? Because it gets the voters out. Exactly, right? How many people are so dishonest? So Fox oh, is going to be God. like, Fox is like, oh shit, look, they, they've got all these these seats in the house. You need to get out and vote. They got a 77% chance of winning. And then the and then the, the CNN press is saying, oh man, there's only one point difference. So we won't really know. I just figured I, uh, it out. I was like, why are they doing it like that? That is crazy. I've been... Um, uh, bedridden with some sores and stuff for a long time. I'm getting better and everything, but I was like, hey, I need to jump on this. I need to get in here, man. You know, I've been talking a lot of shit. I need to be backing it up. So uh, we we got the, um, hold on, sorry about 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So anyway, uh, so I got my absentee ballot in, and this, my uh, uh, social worker came by. We got it all filled out and everything, and then I had one of my uh, helpers go down to the courthouse to the county clerk and give it to her, and she's like, uh... I'm sorry, we can't take this. And she's like, what do you mean? He's disabled. It's an absentee ballot. You know, he filled it in. You guys sent it to him. And she's like, but, um, are you a family, mem- family member? And, of course, she's not a family member. She's black. And it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it could be. But, she, you know, obviously, she was kind of like, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was because I wasn't there. I don't, so I can't read the attitude. But she was like, no, I'm his helper. And he, he has to have this. He has a right to vote. And she's like, yeah, but in, unless you send it in on time, or you're a family member, you know, we can't accept your, your, your ballot. And no one told me that it was just like, you know, I don't think it's voter suppression. I just think that, you know, it's like, wow, man, it's like, I was really upset earlier. I've gotten over it now. Cause now I know what I have to do uh, in, the, in, the, in the next election, you know, but man, it just really pissed me off earlier because, you know, it's like, no one told me, you know, that I had to, you know, send it in in a certain amount of time or I would have, or by and large, I could just put it, get it down there and someone could just hand it to somebody and it would be fine. It didn't have to be a family member. I'm in Missouri, by the way. Did So do you think that the, today's midterms are really going to change life for us tomorrow? Nah, not, not, not tomorrow. Uh, a lot, I think you made a good point or whoever it was made a good point about a lot of it's going to be local. And I think that can stretch out into being uh, federal. Um, like I said, here in Missouri, there's a bit uh, proposition two is about legalization of medical marijuana. I think that hopefully is going to pass. And then you know, um, I think I think I is the more uh, Democrats get back into power, I think that we can you know not we I'm not really Democrat or Republican. I'm more kind of a you know um, independent. You could say I guess, um, but. Um, I think the Democrats could probably, you know, sway more, have more power, you know, in the in the House and the Senate, or how the, how that works out. Uh, Trump's going to be um, a difficult, like he always is, but you know, I don't know, man. I'm I'm an optimist. I'm an undying optimist, but yeah, it's uh, you know, it's um, it's not going to be, you know, in you know tomorrow for sure. Yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you. you Got to keep the phone lines open. Have a good one, bro. All right, brother. Bye. That actually makes sense. At first, I was like, "What? They didn't let him pass in his thing." But think about it. Like, you know how there's elderly people, and then the nurses go in to work with them, or the CNAs that go in. Somebody could just see somebody's voting thing, snatch it, and fill it out, and then go deliver it. Right. I'm actually surprised they even let family members drop it off. I'm surprised you don't have to mail it in. Right. Honestly, mailing it in, you could trick the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing is messed up because you could. You could still do the same thing. You could steal somebody's thing and then send it in. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, are you guy? Are you guys pro weed? <laughs> I think uh, I was reading that there's this article that said something about like weed killed Colorado. Don't let it happen to your state or something like that. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard of that, but. Um, okay, so the Denver Post. As Colorado auto deaths involving marijuana rise. Whoa. Colorado what? doctors claim first marijuana overdose death. Oh, wow. I didn't know that could happen. An 11-month-old boy. I mean. Yeah. That's not. Yeah, that would have happened regardless. Yeah. That would have happened That's regardless. terrible. Um, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it as long as it's helpful to the person. If it's, if it's ru- ruining their lives or, you know, whatever, like, I, like what they were saying there, somebody's going to do that and then get behind a wheel. No, I don't think that you should do that. Um, but you know, some people use it and it helps them with, um, like seizures and different things like that. And then some people, yeah, some but- people, it really chills them out and helps them to like relax yeah, but what's happening in Colorado is not um, medicinal. It's um, recreational. Yeah. So, 
Um, I mean, I'm going against everything I've ever been taught, but I'm okay with that as long as it's within reason. No, I, I agree. You know? Accidents. Okay, so here we go. I mean, some people, it makes them freak out. Those people shouldn't have it. <laughs> but I think you just, as long as you can know yourself and know, like, you know, and then, and then follow what you know, if, you know. Do people get addicted to that? I've heard people say that you don't get addicted to it, but I don't understand how you cannot get addicted to something if it makes you feel better. Like. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much good with it. So, you know, I mean, I saw that one meme. I never really checked it. I feel like that's one of those things where you're never going to be able to get like the objective truth because habit people, forming not addictive. People are so same thing to me. You know, people are so well, no, I think habit forming and addictive are not the same it's thing. It's the same thing to me, I said. You no, know, an addiction is like destructive. You cannot stop. You cannot stop. Habit forming is just a habit. It's not the same thing. <clears throat> America's trying to take after Amsterdam. I think that's a terrible idea. Jonathan, how could being high not affect your driving? Uh, <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? Uh, he's high right now. <laughs> it's not. Hey, Zonia. Zonia, I made the statement that no matter what happens today, we're not really going to, um, nothing is really going to change anything. Honestly, I've seen people high that don't really act all that different. And then I've seen other people high that I'm like, that person is... So stop. Weed is fine. Yeah, Mar Mar <laughs> yeah, Martini. There's not even a there's not even a comparison as, as far as how many deaths from a weed OD mm -hmm. versus yeah. even that weed OD that we talked about was, is questionable. So Denver Public Health. There's a Denver Public Health. No one gets sheet. in bar fights and beat the shit out of their girlfriends <laughs> if they're smoking marijuana. It's a good point. I tried it one time. I got really angry. Really, really angry. Do you think that the left and the right represent the average American's belief? Tell me both sides sound crazy. <laughs> Zonia is hilarious. She goes, I'm on my way to drop off my disappointing ballot. Yeah, if Democrats get the House, they're going to open up more investigations or expand the current into the Trump Russia. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree. I think there's going to be a lot of this desperate stuff. I think the Kavanaugh stuff, they were promising to open up all the FBI files with the Kavanaugh stuff. But due to the last uh, two women coming out and recanting their statements, I think they're probably going to leave that alone now. Leah, good to have you, Leah. I know that you voted straight blue. I didn't Stop vote blue. Stop smearing my name as a leftist, Jenk. <laughs> What's good, Jen? Big blue wave. We had uh, Leah and Jen come in almost simultaneously. Two sisters of the village who are literally like completely diametrically opposed politically. <laughs> <laughs> My lord. My lord. Okay, so let's do this. Let's. I'm going to do a doomsday scenario in um, for the Republicans and a doomsday scenario for the Democrats. So first of all, Donna Shalala. <laughs> That's a terrible name. I wouldn't vote for her just because of her name. Um... BM fan. Okay, so somebody call me. Somebody call me. What would happen to America if the Republicans swept the House and the Senate? What would materially happen in America if that was the case? So somebody call me up and tell me what would happen if that was the case. If the if the Republicans swept the House and the Senate, what would happen? All right, so Leah is calling up. Leah of the Village, talk to me. Um, hi, this is Lelou, actually. I don't know who this Leah of the Village bitch you're talking about is. But... <laughs> you had me for a second. <laughs> what happened to Lelou? Oh, Lelou probably doesn't know we're yeah. on a different channel. Republicans and... Lilo's here. That means I win the bet, right? Yeah. No, you don't win the bet. Go, <laughs> go for it. All right. What's your doomsday scenario? What is... Okay. Uh, so... What are you saying? What if the Republicans sweep 
both? Right. <sighs> okay, clearly. Well, God, I hope that's what happens. If the Republicans sweep both, uh, then everything that's the road we're on keeps going. So I think, especially in in the Senate, um, mm-hmm. if they can increase the majority, that would be great because then they could finally, it would be great if they had the votes by themselves to do like the immigration stuff they want to do. I know um, Trump has been mentioning they want to do another 10% tax cut for the middle class, strictly for the middle class because everybody bitches and complains that, you know, the tax cut they already got was primarily aimed at the wealthiest people, which I don't agree with, but whatever. You don't you don't think that that was aimed at the uh, at the most wealthy Americans? Not at all, no. So so that tax cut. I think ben- it was aimed at the corporations, sure, and the small businesses, and the corporations are the one that are the ones that you know do the hiring in the in this country. When small businesses, of course, do a lot of the hiring as well, but. When businesses can pay lower tax rates, that gives them an incentive to move back into the country for one, and two, they can invest more back into their company. So, okay, so you've seen six million plus people get bonuses or raises due to those tax cuts. So you're a trickle down economist. If that's what you call it, sure. That's that's what you just described. So we, if if we lighten the taxation burden on corporations and small businesses, they're going to in turn recycle that money to their um, employees. So you'll have more bonuses well, and all they, that jazz. That would be the hope. I don't know if they all necessarily do that, but you know that I definitely think that so far it has helped um, the economy and the. Um, like the unemployment and the that kind of situation, I do think it's helped in that aspect of it. Yes. Okay. BM fan wants you to explain Kansas. <sighs> explain Kansas. Yeah, you're what's gonna, going on in Kansas. It is your obligation to explain Kansas, Leah. <laughs> it is my obligation to explain Kansas. BM okay, fan. So Kansas BM, BM really fan. Flat and um, <laughs> I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know what the hell he wants me to explain about it. BM fan, call us up and ex- and, and and tell us why Leah has to explain Kansas. I tell him I will explain Kansas to him when he explains Antifa to me. Kansas was an utter failure of trickle down. Call in BM fan. <clears throat> Uh, okay, oh so, so what do you think is going to happen in the in real life? You think that the Dems are going to get the House and that uh, Republicans are going to get the Senate? I I think the Republicans are going to add two or three seats in the Senate, and oh God, I'm like I'm desperately hoping that they they hold the House. Okay, Fox News by, maybe by one vote or. You know, by whatever seats they have right now, which is like what twenty three. Well, Fox, according to Fox News, it's twenty nine to thirty, um, House and Senate. But according to CNN, it is uh, forty six to forty five in favor of the Republicans. Well, that's interesting. Well, my theory is is that what happened last time during the general election was that all the leftist media was saying Hillary is going to completely annihilate Trump and so they they theorized that they lost because it 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 ratcheted down the urgency right right because okay. le- leftist voters like oh we're kicking ass i don't need to go out there and, <laughs> and vote it had nothing to do with the fact that she was a terrible candidate but no okay. no no it <laughs> no, was the russians not. it was the russians in right. the media yeah so now right. it looked yeah. Yeah, so now what it looks like is that they're calling it very, very close so that people can have a sense of urgency. Whereas if you look at if you look at um, on Fox News, they're saying even though Fox News is saying it's 29 to 30, they're saying that the the Democrats have a 75 percent shot of controlling the House, 
which then ratchets up the urgency of a Republican voter, right? Like if you were just sitting there smoking your your legalized pot, you'd <laughs> you'd be like, shit, the the Democrats are gonna screw up our country. I need to go out and vote. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I think any any Republican or anybody that's in favor of Trump knows, or at least you know, if they've watched any of his rallies lately over the past few weeks, and I've watched all of them, um, if they've watched any of them, they know how important it is to keep that majority in both houses. That's yeah. I I, I mean, if you lose that, yeah. You know, the Democrats are not going to want to work with, you know, moving his agenda forward. They're, I'll, you know, the, I'll tell the you something. Years, all they've shown is they're really good at obstructing. That's about it. I'll tell you something. That MAGA bomber really hurt the, uh, the right wing movement in America. It really <laughs> did. That was like I, one of the. And I, I, honestly, I don't think that was a coincidence. That was like one of the worst, worst timed, right wing, best, most convenient timed left wing mm -hmm. moments in 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 recent and, history. You know, you know, it's like that old saying: if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. you know, I hear you. I I know where like, you're. You know, now that we can look at like you know, like the whole Kavanaugh thing, post, post, you know, afterward. And see what happened there. It's very how three very, or four of those people have been referred to the FBI for yeah the lying and the false claims that they made. I mean, hey, it's uh, BM fan one hundred and one. I guess BM fan is gonna is is gonna call in and and demand that you explain uh, Kansas. Give me a second. Oh God. Okay. I'll only do it. BM fan. Hey. I think we just lost Leah of the village. Hold on. Where'd she go? Nope, she's on hold. So you hit resume call. And then, Leah, are you there? I'm here. Okay, so hold on. Usually there's that button. This is I'm having a, I'm having a hard time working with this technology. Oh, there he is. Alright. Click it. Hit add. Oh, BM fan is coming. He's coming. He's going to tell you to explain Kansas. I still I have no idea what the hell he's talking about when it comes to Kansas. BM fan. Hey. Okay, so you, you had the nerve, the unmitigated gall, the mendacity uh, to talk about Kansas. Tell me about Kansas. You told us to explain Kansas. What is there to explain about Kansas? Uh, sure. So back in, I think, 2012, Kansas governor pushed a massive tax cut for the wealthy and did basically the most extensive implementation of trickle-down economics there is. Okay. Uh, and then it completely annihilated Kansas. What do you mean? Okay. Uh, they, it was so bad that even the Republican Senate had to uh, or, or end it. Whoa! They had to what? Um, they had to. So like, um, let me. Uh, let me. Do you mind if I read straight from an NPR article? Yes. Go ahead. All right. In 2012, the Republican governor pushed reforms through the state legislature that dramatically cut income taxes across the board. Brownback boasted the plan would deliver a shot of adrenaline to the Kansas economy. The opposite happened. Revenue shrank. The economy grew more slowly than in neighboring states and the country as a whole. Uh, Kansas bond rating plummeted, and the state cut funding to education and infrastructure as a result. Uh, last year, the Republican-controlled state Senate, this would be 2016, I believe, um, voted to roll back the tax cuts, but Kansas is still dealing with the aftermath of this experiment. State lawmakers are now seeking to close a $900 million budget gap that uh, was uh, caused as a result of that. All right, so Leah, what you were articulating where the tax cuts went to corporations <laughs> and small businesses, and that that's a positive thing because now they're going to employ more people, um, it doesn't seem 
doesn't. <laughs> that, that, if you, if you, oh my God, you cannot compare. You cannot compare tax cuts in strictly Kansas to tax cuts in the country. I'm sorry. Why? That's that's not apples to apples. How come? Why? This is this is not rocket science here. This is common this is, sense. This is trickle down economics. This is your messiah. This is my messiah. Oh my this god! Is your messiah. Me here. This is yeah. Okay. All hail! So, all hail the market. Okay, so. Okay, so that's a forty percent since the election. Sure. B- BM fan, BM fan. Will you yep. agree that economically speaking, Trump has had a good effect on the country? No. No. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? If you look at the economy, it has just been following the same path of Obama. It hasn't really changed. So oh Obama. What I really would like some of whatever it is you're smoking. I mean, let's let's do some googling. Let's look up uh, the Dow Jones yeah, let's do some over Google. the past uh, ten years or so. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, are you saying that none of Trump's actions had anything to do with why the economy is doing so well right now? Mm, I mean, the tax cuts obviously benefit uh, Wall Street and and you know the the people who really benefit from. Um, the stock market and whatnot, but that doesn't really help uh, the average person. No. Well, doesn't that help on employment? Okay. Well, does doubling the standard tax deduction help the average person? The average tax person did not get much out of any of this. What did help doubling was people the standard like deduction. Bezos so, like, and others. Those people that are making twenty five thousand dollars or less that are instead of having their first sixty five hundred dollars income tax free next year, it's going to be their first. Thirteen thousand is going to be tax I mean, free, so they're going to sure. be paying more tax rate on less taxes. I mean, you don't sure, think that that's benefit? that's beneficial to them, but the reality is that the actual rich people got way, 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 way more to the point they're that tax cut may as well not even really been worth it. Do you and think? Because the result is we're at higher, what is it? The uh, the deficit. How much did these tax cuts raise the deficit? I okay, H- hold on, hold on, hold on. BM fan, are you saying that CNBC is a right wing outlet? Uh, no. CNBC is not a right wing outlet. Okay, let me read something to you. CNBC is one of the most liberal. Okay, let me read something to you, BM fan. This was from September, very recent, 2018. Trump has set economic growth on fire. Here's how he did it. President Donald Trump presides over an administration that has seen an enormous level of controversy that could overshadow a burgeoning economy. He has delivered on promises to cut taxes and regulations and promote activity through more aggressive government spending. Okay. Critics believe that it won't last because the fiscal stimulus is aimed at only near-term growth. The results, though, have been impressive. A surge in company profits and near record levels of optimism from consumers and businesses, which is, of course, Wall Street. I'm translating there. Yes, yeah. So a, a leftist outpost, BM fan, is crediting. But none of that Can you let me anything. finish a sentence, my brother? Okay. Let me finish the sentence. Uh, well, it doesn't. That's just GDP. That doesn't uh, actually help the average It's my show. BM fan, is it because I'm black? Cause you you keep interrupting me. Oh my God, you're killing me. Here. Continue. Okay, let me just say my thing, me jig. Okay, and then okay, you guys okay. can go back Continue. to jihad. So a left wing outpost, and, and BM fan, I. He is not left wing. Hold what on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a second here. Okay. Last time I did a fireside, I don't know if you were here, but I criticized Trump extensively. I pretty much put eighty three percent of the blame of the synagogue shooting on him. Right. So, okay, yeah. so you know I'm not a you know I'm not a I'm not a Trumpist. However, sure. I traffic in facts. Here are the facts. CNBC is crediting Trump with deregulation and other things that are boosting the economy. And the only criticism they have is that it's not gonna last long enough. They're not okay. saying they're not saying though that Trump just inherited Obama's awesome economy. They're saying that because Trump did you know, radical, right-wing, laissez-faire, um, free market capitalist actions at the executive level, it has helped our economy. I would disagree because it hasn't helped the economy. It's helped GDP, but GDP doesn't do 
anything for me. It doesn't do anything for you. So, but my... All those, those, those six million people that got a raise or a bonus due to the tax cuts, those are just... Yes, and those same people who then all got laid off. <laughs> No, it, no, it's it's not only isolating the GDP, bruh. I mean, look, when you were talking about Kansas, when when you were talking about Kansas, I mean, I agree with you. The facts are there, but but we're using the same methodology, and even and CNBC has to admit that Trump is is. Uh, I mean, generally, you can say yes, the quote unquote economy is doing good, but the reality is that a lot of people are not doing good. Well, yeah, but the, the, the richest people are doing fantastic right now. They're having a ball. But the average person, of course, they're not feeling the effects of this economy. Okay, what? And, and you think the average person was doing better under Obama? Um, I would say they're probably about the same. I mean, yes, this tax cut did, you know, give people a little more money or whatever, but it, it's not nearly enough to be worth the, this level of uh, trickle down that we're doing right now. No. How can you say that GDP isn't the indicator of a good economy? Oh, oh it absolutely is not. Okay, how? how it absolutely is not. Okay, how do you, how, how, what, what, let me ask this. Is unemployment a good indicator of the economy? Uh, it varies. Say again? Because having super low unemployment is actually bad. Okay, has Trump had a good effect on our unemployment rate? I mean, BM fan, I mean, come on, bro. Is that a question? I'm, I mean, what I'm seeing in this article is what they're saying is his effects have had a good impact, but that in the middle of 2019, it's going to peter out. So their argument is not that Trump inherited a good economy from Obama. What they're saying is it's a short-term yeah. solution. I mean, but that, he, that's he absolutely did. That's that's what I'm saying. So oh if we're, God. if as I was saying, if we look at say the Dow Jones and we look at Wall Street, Wall Street has been making record highs ever since Obama. No, what? Hold on. Yes. The unemployment rate is three point nine percent, just one tenth of a percentage point above the lowest level since nineteen sixty nine. Yes. It was like close to fifty years ago, if I could do my math. Okay. And what are wages? Well, hold on for a second. They're growing the fastest they have in the past 10 years. So the GDP... they're also keeping up with inflation, so it means absolutely nothing. Well, BM fan, hold on, bro. Because the, the <laughs> wages... <laughs> Obama had it's eight... Years. You can see has got an answer for everything. Yeah. Yeah. No, you don't... Yeah. Hold on, BM, BM, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I'm quoting something right now. Okay. So, a couple things. Number one, you made the argument that he... But that Trump just inherited a good economy from Obama. So I yeah. want I want you to source me an economist that will agree with you and get me the source because I can I'm gonna, I can post right now. It you know basically what you said about Kansas, right? You quoted the NPR article. There's a person attached to it. You know we gave it to you, right? You know Leah surrendered that point. I mean her her rebuttal was that they're they're not an apples to apples correlation. I disagreed with her. But this is curious to me because it's clear that unemployment has been the lowest it's been in almost 50 years. And, and now you're talking now you're switching the goalposts and talking about wages. Well, Obama didn't do a damn thing about wages either, right? I don't know, he didn't. Right? Uh, I actually I personally I'll say I actually do not know. No, he <laughs> So if you don't know that Obama did anything with wages, how could you then make the argument that we inherited a good economy from Obama? I mean, that's a pretty basic fact point that you don't know. So how could you make that correlation then? Hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read. What'd you say again? Obama, the first president to not hit 3% GDP growth for a year. Okay. It seems to me that... We were told 2% is the new normal. Unemployment, unemployment was up doing higher doing Obama. GDP was lower. Trump came in, deregulated stuff, and let the free market do what it what it's supposed. And you you know I'm not a, a a complete capitalist. Yeah. But in this particular area, he 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 did his thing, man. You got to give him his props. I mean, but I just it, it doesn't benefit. 
I heard a like wonderful said, we're, statistic we're that largely small talking cap. about GDP. GDP is a very rough indicator of the economy. And we you also know? are talking about unemployment, which is the lowest it's been in 50 years, which is but half a century. It doesn't explain much. The economy in total, while still not in breakout mode, has grown by $1.4 trillion through the second quarter. The same yeah. time period for Obama saw a gain of just $481 billion, or a third of Trump's total. <clears throat> I mean, what can you do with that, bro? You can play Seven Dust Denial for him if you want. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, I, like, would you like this article that says how having a low, uh, having a actually higher unemployment is actually good for the economy? Oh, having high on un- Okay, yeah. so no. Oh, hold on. Oh. Immigrants want to come here. Right? Hey, hey, stop, stop. We're not gonna dehumanize anybody. Listen, BM fan. BM fan. I'm yep. I'm gonna let you read your article. I'm gonna let you source it, and I appreciate you for sourcing it. Okay. But are you honestly? Are you telling us and you're telling everybody in Middle America that it's no. better? It's bad that the unemployment has been the lowest it's been in 50 years. I'm saying it doesn't matter because it's not really helping anyone. Having a job doesn't help helping anyone. Helping the four and a half million people that have a job now, it, it, it's not enough. I know it's not enough. It's not perfect, but it's better than not having a job, isn't it? But is it really worth doing all of those tax cuts? Yes, if it can employ people. Yeah. What are you talking about? No. No. So we should have them unemployed. I'm saying that yeah, giving you need people to, like you need to Jeff Bezos somewhere. and all of these wealthy billionaires, all that extra money w- was not worth the the, the the tiny, tiny benefits that we've obtained. What the hell are you... How can it be a tiny benefit that we've got the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years, BM fan? Great question. How is that a tiny benefit? $1.4 trillion uh, of economic growth. GDP is higher. Unemployment's but low. But you, but once again, none of that really means anything. Like, you keep saying GDP. GDP is, is irrelevant. That's what I keep trying to tell you. Okay, so GDP is irrelevant, and then unemployment is good when it's high. I, I'm saying unemployment is relatively as pointless as, okay. uh, as GDP is. Tell me what the actual metric is that will measure whether or not we're in a good economy. Wages. Uh, wages. Wages. In low inflation, or wages going higher than inflation. Hey, who who increased the inflation over the last decade? Um, I mean, inflation has just been consistently going up. What did Obamacare do to our uh, do do to our economy? Oh my God, <clears throat> decimated healthcare. I mean, healthcare was always crap. What? <laughs> Yeah, well, it doesn't make I, I just, I just, I just, I, I mean, health care, health care was, say, hey, we have 20 more people on health care because we're forcing them to pay for it, so, let alone they can't afford to freaking use it. Health care was on its way, or before Obamacare, okay? Health care was already crap. It was just spiraling out of control already, okay? We agree with that. Do you agree with that or no? No, that, that that's <laughs> indisputable facts. Because you weren't paying for it. No, Leah, that, that's indisputable fact. Healthcare was a disaster. We know that. Like, healthcare was a disaster before Obamacare. That's why they did Obamacare. The problem with Obamacare was it was too Republican. It wasn't socialist enough. Okay. Obamacare was what? It was a uh, it was a Heritage Foundation thing. Right. No, you're right. Uh, you're you're right. Hold on. Let me let me read something else. The most recent reading from the National Federation of Independent Business was the second highest in history, dating back 45 years. Small business owners reported aggressive hiring plans, the only obstacle to which has been a dearth of labor supply. The end of June saw 6.7 million job openings in just 6.7 million Americans, classified as unemployed and unprecedented imbalance. We got more jobs available than people that we can pick up then to work. Have people to fill them. Right, exactly. That's the first time that's happened. This is CNBC. This is not Fox. Is that, is that, it? let me ask you a question, BM. Is it a good indicator of an economy that small businesses, not the nasty capitalist corporations, 
Small okay. businesses are, are are publishing aggressive hiring plans. Is that good or bad? I mean, sure, that's good. Okay, so then Trump has had a good effect on the economy then. Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. I uh, still think it's not nearly it's not nearly good enough to the point that we've incurred the, the, the hits that we have. Okay. Well, considering he's only been there for two years, I'd say it's a definitely a step in the right direction. Well, where wh- what hits are we talking about here? Um, Read me okay, the. Like I said, look. Okay. Well, like what? What did our um, debt just hit? I don't know. No idea. Twenty-one trillion. I don't know. I know uh, Obama uh, added more to the debt than all previous <laughs> presidents combined. But you Dude. know, oh, that's neither my, here you, nor there. Oh, you you have not read things clearly. Um, right. Yeah. No, I don't know how to read. <clears throat> we got a 1.5 trillion dollar tax reform plan. I don't know. I don't know, BM fan. I feel like you're not being objective here. Do me a favor. Read me. Read Dang me. Let's see. Um, this is a Reuters article here. Okay. Okay, what are we looking at? All right, hang on. I'm still reading. What, what, but what are we trying to find here? I'm trying to find the actual, um, just how much debt these tax cuts are causing. Well, I mean, people are working, bruh. <laughs> but they're, they're not overriding the tax cuts. They're, they're not overriding the, the debt. That's the problem. How do you even know that? You don't even have the data on hand. That's why I'm looking it up right now. Well, how? But don't you see you're putting the cart before the horse? You're saying, <laughs> you're, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I saw that. BM, I'm just not finding them. You're saying so you don't have the data point then. Hang on, I'm finding it. Okay, so stop right there. So you're saying that the 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 gains that we've gotten that you had to concede to are not worth what it what costs us to put in debt. But now you've just admitted you don't even know how much debt we're in. So how could you even make that statement? Hang on. Okay, here's a CNBC article here. Trump, uh, the numbers are in. Trump's tax cut didn't reduce the deficit despite many promises. Uh, he proposed a ten trillion tax cut, far larger than any Republican rivals. Yada yada yada. Been in effect for what? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let him fi- let him finish, Leah. Let him finish. Um, the 2018 deficit swelled to 779 billion, the highest in six years, a 17 percent increase over 2017. Okay. But I got a I got a one point six trillion dollar tax cut, and I've got a I got a trillion dollars going into the economy. So doesn't isn't that going to take care of itself over time? Because you just said that it doesn't it's not worth the cost. Hang on. BM fan. Uh, federal spending as a share of the economy fell. Revenue fell even more. Corporate tax receipts plummeting thirty one percent. Forecast the deficit hitting 981 billion in 2019 and exceeding 1 trillion every year after that. <laughs> Maybe you should go do your research and then come back and we'll have a conversation about that. Well, I'm just doing basic math. If if you've got a, you know, I don't know, 500 billion in a deficit, but then you got 1.4 trillion going into the economy, doesn't that take care of itself? Yeah. Well, I'm asking BM fan. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... are you are you engaging with me at all here, BM fan? I'm just trying to find articles right now. Okay. Because I can't. Like, I don't, I'm not like typing in the right things. I guess here. All right. All right. All right. Uh... <laughs> I look when when Trump says inflammatory things that then activate insane people to go do terrible things. I I see that right wing people have a very difficult time of holding him accountable. But when Trump does things good, f- you're the exception. I agree. But when Trump does good things for the economy that are plain as day, I, I, I don't understand. It's math. You can't really argue with math, BM fan. 
I just I just think that your uh, your your disdain for the free market and capitalism is clouding your interpretation of what's happening. I mean, is that possible, BM Finn? Um, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, I think I think that that's what's happening, bruv. Because I mean, all I can all I can really say is I know one thing for sure. I would rather have the economy we have now than the economy we had four years ago. Well, I I, I agree. I agree. I don't I don't see how anybody could argue that. You got more people working. Yeah. You you know, BM fan. I'm a hiring manager. So. I hire people, so it, it's it's a beautiful thing to be able to uh, to put applications out there and hire people. We're going right now. Our company is, is attacking, not attacking, but we're targeting um, folks in the Midwest who are who don't have jobs and things like that. And we're going to be able to get them working. That's a good feeling, my guy. I've also had to tell people they don't have their jobs anymore in mass, and I'll tell you that sucks. That's one of the worst feelings in the world, my dude. So when I hear that, you know, people have aggressive hiring plans, I know for a fact because I just literally was on a call three hours ago talking about hiring plans. And it's not just this is the other thing that you got to realize when you start talking about hiring people, you need people to manage those people. So if I say I'm going to hire, whoa, we're going to hire 400 people. You can't hire 400 minimum wage workers. You have to hire, you know, 20, 30 people a pop and then put a manager over them and put a manager over that guy. So not all these people are only going to be making minimum wage, BM fan. Some of these people are going to have careers that are going to, you know, be able to help them take care of their families. I just don't understand how... Um, I just don't understand. I, I want you to go back to that article and show me because you said something to the effect of you you have found an article that says that having too low of an unemployment rate is actually bad. Um, where was that? While he's looking that up, Senate, this is according, I'm going to do Fox News, I'm going to do CNN. According to Fox News, it's 46 to 40 for a red Senate. And according to Fox News, it's 56 to 50 for a red House. What's interesting is that they are projecting that the Democrats have a 79% chance of winning the House, even though the Republicans are up by six seats. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going over to CNN, okay? CNN has it 65-61 for a red house, 42 to 36 for a red Senate. Excellent. <laughs> you sound like such a bad guy. Excellent. Okay. Uh We never got around to. No, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Take that house. Hold on. One of one of the smartest villagers is going to get on the lines. I'm going to add Zonia here, and Zonia is gonna is gonna. Oh, I thought I was expecting uh, Ben Webb. No, Ben Webb. Ben Webb. I don't <laughs> think knows about the. Uh, I was kidding. The was channel kidding. yet. Here's mystery. I don't want these logic defying Dems anywhere. Zonia. Hey guys. Hey. Okay, so Zonia, you heard you you heard the back and forth she had. T t t what were you calling for? They're both wrong. First of all, we're both <laughs> wrong. Okay. Yes. And in, in some cases, both right. Um, well, there are a few areas to touch up on. Uh. DM fan was talking about how with wages going up and inflation going up, one of the problems that you have there is you have what's considered to be flat wages because even though you technically you're making more numbers and dollars, you're actually spending more numbers and dollars just to live because everything costs more. So if your rise of income is matching or less than the rise of inflation, then you're either at a flat 
flat income or a declining income. And so that needs to be factored in. Inflation has been drastically on the rise. Everything is getting more expensive everywhere. And housing is getting more and more difficult to obtain for people, not just for buying, but for renting. So these are things that you have to factor in. One of the other things that was mentioned is that the GDP is not a good gauge of how well the economy is doing. Well, there's there's two parts to that. Um, it's a gauge of how well the economy is doing as compared to the rest of the world. That's what the GDP is. So your GDP really doesn't have anything to do with how well your people are doing in your country. If you take a look at Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's GDP is excellent, but that's their their gauge as how well their economy is doing as compared to the world economy. But their people are suffering and their people are starving at times. They've got a, a large population of extremely impoverished people. So you have to factor that in as well. Now, one thing that does tie in well is GDP versus potential deficit impact, right? So if you're deficit, if you're not paying it down and it's growing, but at the same time your GDP is growing, your deficit isn't really a big threat because your GDP is, is basically positioning you for a lot of strength in the world economy. And your, your debt that you owe in your deficit is against the world economy. So you have to factor that in, too. Um, what about unemployment? Then, so unemployment is... Uh, we're actually in a good situation right now. A lot of jobs have been created. The problem that we have right now, and this is something that I've been feeling, um, I might be cutting out. We've got low signal. No, I, I hear but you. Keep going. The, the uh, problem that I've been feeling is, so I'm invested in the stock market, and I'm very active in the stock market, and we just went through a major stock market correction, and as the correction happened, hiring slowed down. Now, hiring slows down, of course, at the end of the year, but it slowed down more than we expected it to because of the market correction that just happened a week ago. And now, a lot of people involved in the market are worried that there's going to be even an even bigger correction because we have such an inflated economy. So the economy is growing too fast. It's inflating too fast. It's growing well, so we've, we've got some good growth, but there's so much inflation underneath it all that if, if things correct too aggressively, all those jobs are going to go away. People are going to get laid off. So those millions of people that were hired, well, not anymore. They're going to be unemployed. So who, who's handling that? that? The, the Fed? Are we depending on the Fed to regulate that? created back in 2008 2009 so they're all unregulated and back to the way they were pre uh, last crash yeah Deep. so there's no regulation of it now there's you can go back you can do your um, you know risky trading with um, you know with weak securities and uh, and we're all back kind of in the same spot we're giving loans to people who can't pay them back um, we are, char we have people charging way too much for, for rent and for housing. And, you know, that's going to, as soon as people start getting laid off, they're going to default on that. At, and then all that is going to collapse. Um, then another thing I wanted to go and debunk. Well, hold, hold on for, hold, hold on for a second. Zemi. <laughs> stay, right. stay there. If, if people are working, if people have jobs, your fear is because of deregulation, they're going to make unsound business decisions. Uh, we're already making unsound trade decisions in Wall Street. That's been going on now for the past year. No, but when you talk, and, uh, when you talk about the 2008 bubble, though, mm -hmm. there, there is a Wall Street element, and then there's also the element of I make 32k a year. I'm going to go buy that three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Yeah, but we were doing great at that time in 2007 as well. The like economy was on the rise. People were buying houses, and it was sharp spikes. And then as soon as we hit a little bit of a ripple in the market, everything kind of collapsed because people 
were not able to keep up with the inflation of the inflation of the economy, so they defaulted on their loans, defaulted on their rent. Yeah, but, Companies you know, weren't able to, to pay back their loans that they were on as well. Yeah. They laid off all their employees, et cetera, and it created this crash that happened well, my in the early 2000s. My question is, is it the government's responsibility to tell a person who's only making 32 k no, you can't, you can't uh, take out a, a 350k uh, loan? <sighs> is that the government's responsibility? No, it is not. But it is the government's responsibility to make sure that the the companies that have a profound impact on the stability of our economy are not doing risky things, like not going and, and giving a loan that can't possibly be paid back to someone, you know, giving a loan to someone that they can't possibly pay back on paper. So that's what led to the crash it was one of the many elements that led to it well is it but inflation was the ultimate bottoming out problem that we had because oh. in, well. an, in an underinflated economy you can survive those ripples right so if we have blips in our economy you can survive them because you're not running at the ragged edge of what you can possibly sustain in the way of what you can pay for you know what your outstanding debts and bills are etc wait wait a but second zonia Wait a second, because I, I think you just did some sleight of hand here. I, I said, uh, is it the government's role to regulate what a personal uh, private citizen does with an unsound business decision? You said no. But then you said it's their role to, to hold the bank accountable for giving that irresponsible citizen that loan. It, isn't that practically the exact same thing? How is that different? by which companies make certain decisions that can drastically impact the economy, right? But if you if you go and you just tell people, hey, you know, because historically, black people have been regulated out of owning homes by the government. Um, yeah. That's, a, that's something that's happened in many cases throughout very, very many states in the country. Right, that's why I'm extremely skeptical of government regulation. regulation. Yeah. So that's a, a way of that people have regulated people and the ability of people to do things. And yeah, uh, if you get into the habit of regulating too much around that kind of decision making, it can create systemic uh, pits that people fall into and can't get out of. Okay. But, but if you can say within reason, hey, you know, make sure that it's at least feasible that they can pay it, pay it back, that it doesn't require a miracle for them to pay it back, that's not out of, out of you know, reason, I would argue. But, yeah, I mean, right now we're completely deregulated, so we're probably going to have the same problem again. Well, we're not completely deregulated. He didn't completely deregulate. I mean, he, I was listening to Shapiro two days ago, and he was complaining that there was still a whole bunch of deregulation to do. So we're not totally, we're not completely deregulated, but... Uh, well, when it comes to what you can trade in the way of securities, we are completely deregulated right now. Well, in that, in that particular context, yes, but I mean, that isn't, I, I mean, where, where is the responsibility of the individual consumer to make those sound business decisions? Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that would be great, but we don't really educate people very well, so All right. that's not working. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it'd be great if we could handle the responsibility of free trade. It would be great if we could, yeah. But All right. Actually, free trade does create, um, you know, power uh, concentrations. So that's what we have a lot of right now. Everything is kind of ruled by a handful of very large banks and they're not really, they don't really care a lot about whether or not the economy is entirely successful. They care about whether or not they're making money off of either the success or failure of the economy. So when you look at things like the big short, a ton of money was made off the failure of the economy. Yeah. Um, so, so, so give me, you really need to have some sort of regulation in there that says you can't create this kind of, of bubble economy that has 
the risk of the bulk of the people. Give me this. Right? You got to. You know, we're only a few thousand people at the top benefit, and the rest of the people fail. Sonia, give me your uh, final answer as to uh, whether or not. Well, I, I want two questions. Has Trump had a good effect on the economy, at least in the short term? True or false? Here's where my next debunk is. We don't truly understand what the impact is, and now this is this is. The way it goes with every single president, no matter what, your the bulk of your first term, the economy is from the previous president. Same goes for Barack Obama. And if you take a look at what the economists were saying when Obama came in and the economy was rising, they're saying, oh, but that's George W. Bush's economy. And when George W. Bush came in, they're saying, oh, no, no, that's Clinton's economy. And it goes that way the whole way back until... Your policies have actually bore fruit. That doesn't really happen for a few years. Well, Obama had that's... Obama had eight years, though, Zonia. Yeah, that's what I mean. So we've got two years of Trump. You're looking at at least two years before you get to see the effects of Trump's policies on the economy. Yeah, but right? did, so... didn't are you saying that Trump's de deregulation has had nothing to do with the economic spike in the short term? Spike. However, we did have that market correction, so we're back down to where we were before the changes went into effect. So just last week, the entire market corrected itself. The Dow Jones went back down, NASDAQ went back down, and everything's back to where it was before all those changes went into effect. So, so yeah, it was either Obama's or Trump's didn't do anything. There was some intermediary inflation with publicly traded corporations because the tax cuts that my company got, they did a stock buyback so they could hold more of their stock that allowed them to inflate the price. So the value of the stock went up, spiked. But then when the market corrected, everything went back to normal. So we're back to where we were. So your, your um, perspective on Trump is that it's too early to call either way. Yeah, you can't really call it, and historically, that's always been the case with every president in their first two to three years. Well, not two term. Their economic policies until toward the end of their first term. Not two term presidents. If you, if you're if you're coming in yeah. after a two term tech president, it's different than yeah, a one term president. Toward the end of their first term. Yeah. So yeah, with two term presidents, obviously they're carrying their own economy at that point. But you always have to wait. For it normally, it used to be that it took an entire term. That was back in the 80s. In the 90s, it started becoming about a three-year period. We're coming closer to two-year periods. And the reason for that is because there's more participation in the stock market. So right. the ripples of effect are a little bit more immediate than they were before. And with every year, as more people contribute to the stock market, the ripples become narrower and narrower and we feel the effect of economic changes more immediately. So Obama Obama had four of those cycles. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't very impressed with him economically, Zonia. No, I, w I wasn't impressed with Obama <laughs> either economically. So <laughs> part of the problem with Obama was that he carried the Bush uh, bailout along with his first term. And so we shelled out we shelled out $800 billion the first time around into Wall Street to try and save the banks. And then we shelled out an additional, what was it, $1.5 trillion after that? So that, as it was, we took an economic hit. And Obama's whole thing was, hey, we're going to be invested in the banks now. No, we're not invested in the banks. We're not making, the country isn't making any money off of the big banks. Right, so and the the, the, so the idea... The idea then that that Obama that that Trump is simply enjoying Obama's success is just silly. Then that's a dumb argument. What you're saying is there is no real success after the market correction. Is what you're saying? No, there really isn't. That's your argument. Yeah. And okay. Uh, BM fan. I think we just lost. Uh, Leah, are you there? I'm here, yeah. 
Hold on. I gotta I gotta I gotta call Zonia for one more thing. Okay, so Zonia, are you still yeah, on? I'm here. Zonia, um low unemployment, is that good or bad? Zonia. I think Zonia is the one that cut out. She said she got disconnected. Zonia, type in the uh in the thing or call back. Oh hold on, I'm gonna call her. One more thing. One more thing. Thank you guys for being patient. Of course. Here we go. Zonia, you back? Yeah. Low unemployment. If Trump is able to keep the sub 4% unemployment rate throughout his entire presidency, is that good or bad? That would be good. Um, I, the argument that higher unemployment is better for the economy is based on a number of different ways of looking at economics, and I don't necessarily agree with it. Uh, low unemployment is really good, but there's one thing to also keep in mind. I don't have the source information in front of me. I'd have to look it up. But um, last year, at the end of last year, when they were doing the unemployment numbers, the one thing that they didn't factor in that was really important was how many people left the job market, gave up, right? So yeah. there was there were a lot of economists that were saying that many people who were continually unable to get employed after the 2008-2009 collapse gave up and left the job market and have been leaving the job market little by little from 2012 until 2018, or I guess last end of last year, 2017. So, and that wasn't factored in, and economists were saying, hey, you need to subtract them from the total count in order for the unemployment numbers to accurately reflect the current economy. Well, <clears throat> when you say they left the economy, what do you mean? They're just, they're just hanging out on state assistance now? Uh, some have. have. Uh, some have left the country. But, yeah, many have stayed, have been hanging out on, on public assistance or whatever form they have in their particular region. Uh, all the one example of this are all the people who were, um, you know, Trump made a, a lot of noise about the coal industry and, and getting coal jobs back and various other types of blue collar labor where people had been struggling with not, you know, unable to get jobs and sustain themselves since the collapse. And uh, they haven't gotten their jobs back. So who the coal people? Yeah. Yeah, that was just Trump jumping on Hillary's ridiculously stupid I'm going to destroy coal. <laughs> Some of the stuff that put she put the coal business coal miners out of business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that 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 <laughs> But yeah, it's like the Russians. The Russians are the Russians are the reason. Okay, so we we agree unemployment an unemployment rate um is is uh is good. Having a low unemployment rate is good. That's, that's and just so far we're doing all right with that. But if with the rumblings that I'm hearing in the stock market uh, economist realm, it's looking like we're going to have another more serious correction. And when that happens, there, there, lots of people are going to get laid off because that's what happens when the major market corrections happen on a heavily inflated economy. Mm -hmm. This is just an anecdote, but I have actually been hearing um, – uh, quite a few people over the last week reporting uh, layoffs, anecdotally. Well, I'm telling you anecdotally that I, we're we're set to hire a bunch of people. <laughs> so, uh, here's something interesting, Vin. Uh, when the 2009 crash happened, uh, I was working at a company that hired, I think we hired 400 or so people in the six months leading up to the to January of 2009. And at the first business day of the year, they laid off 90 people that day and they continued laying people off in chunks for all the way up until I think it was March of 2009. I got laid off late February of 2009 from that company. And, you know, we had hired some ungodly number of people and then laid them all off. And that's what happens in that economy. A lot of people are, are not paying attention to it because the people at the top of the businesses who actually know what's going on and, and have their finger on the pulse of the economy, 
they're not going to say anything about it because if they do, that shakes faith in the company. They don't want their employees to go and spread rumors about it, etc. So when these things happen, all the employees are surprised by it. The executives weren't surprised by it, but the employees are because they're like, wait a minute, we were just hiring a whole bunch of people and now we're laying them off. Right. And that's the way it works. It happened with me. It happened with a lot of people that I know at the time. Yeah, that was that was uh, two thousand eight nine was an interesting set of years for sure. Yeah, and a lot of people are talking about how we're moving in the same direction again. So that's something to keep in mind. As much as you can say, "Hey, it looks good right now," there are a lot of experts who are saying, "Yeah, but it's also looking really shaky." You know, the supports of this economy are looking iffy. Yeah, but how much how much of that is just is just uh, the trauma? of not wanting to be too optimistic because of what happened about, you know, in 2008, about a decade ago. Yeah, I couldn't really do more than speculate on that. But all I know is I've seen the patterns and I've, you know, and I'm feeling similar build up to the previous patterns. Good. All right. Well, that's not good, but you, you gave a very well-balanced, nonpartisan, objective view you also you also revealed yourself, Zonia, to be a filthy capitalist because you're you're very well versed in the in the stock market and you are Wall Street. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I uh, never claimed I wasn't, but <laughs> I I try to to achieve a balance at least in that to some regard, you know, with some regard. But uh, when it comes down to it, at the same time, I do want to make money and have a comfortable retirement mm-hmm mm-hmm the truth comes out bm fan bm fan we need we need to we need to uh we need to tax her don't we we need to tax the hell out of her don't we bm fan uh it depends uh what uh what her uh annual is she's in silicon valley bm fan do the math i ain't saying shit <laughs> are, are you in like the top uh in the 1%? <laughs> don't, not saying shit. Don't say nothing, <laughs> Zonia. Fear. 1% is what? 500, I think? Yeah, that's about right now. Yeah, it's, it is shrinking, though. So pretty soon that'll be, you know, a million a year, uh, something like that for the top 1%. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I do well. That's good for me. However, these tax cuts to back up BM fan, what you were saying earlier, yeah, I'm benefiting from these tax cuts a lot more than a lot of other people I know. Well, yeah, you're, benef- that, you're benefiting a lot yeah. more, but that doesn't mean other people are not benefiting. It just means that you're benefiting more. Well, it depends. So if you are under, what was it? I think if you're making fewer than... 70,000 in uh, a, a year, you are going to pay more in your wage taxes this time around than you'll get back on your tax cut, on your income tax cut. So your wage taxes will go up just enough to where you'll spend. I think they were saying that at $70,000, you would be paying about uh, 1500 more uh, per year. So whatever you saved, you're still paying 1500 more. What do you say to uh, that, Leah? <laughs> so something to keep in mind. Is mm-hmm. I'm going to be making a lot more money. For sure, yeah. I haven't it's, heard that. Uh, it's, so what really benefits people on tax cuts, this is something I've tried to take advantage of recently. And yes, you can call me evil if you want, but I don't want to just shell out money for no good reason. Um, people who benefit from this a lot are people who do what we call an I-9 corp to corp. They're not a W-2 employee. They're not getting a regular W-2 paycheck. They do an I-9 with their company, like executives do that, etc. And they have their own corporation that is bridged with that company for payouts, and they're not making a wage, so you, they don't get, they don't pay any taxes and wages. So they don't have to, you know, people who do that, which are typically executives, they don't have to shell out these wage taxes, so they get all the benefit. So that's why a lot of these tax cuts are structured in a way to make sure that people who work 
as a corporation or as a big business type person, like a big executive, they don't have to deal with the tax burden that all the wage makers, wage earners do. And so what happens is you take the taxes out of the wage earners to pay for the cuts to those who go corp to corp. Whoa. That's something I've been structuring for the past couple of years now. I've built a corporation for myself. And little by little, I've been running all of my investments into the corporation as a holdings company. And then what I do is I choose, depending on which benefits me more, whether or not I want to do a pass-through or run the normal corporate tax uh, you know, scheme. And so now the corporate tax rate has dropped down to 21%. So I don't do pass-through anymore because I'm taxed at 39%. Well, Zonia, I need corporate tax is 21%. I need you to I need you to consult. I need I need you to consult with me. Hey, what are you doing? What's happening? <laughs> so I, I need you to I need you to consult with me, Zonia. <laughs> when when if you recall back during the 2008 election, when Romney's income was being disputed and his taxes were being disputed and they were showing that he had only paid 13% in taxes. The reason why is because he's not making any wages. So all he ever gets taxed on are on, you know, some small things here and there. Like he gets most of his gains are going to be capital gains or they're going to be dividends. And so he's going to pay capital gains taxes, which are way lower, especially if your wage income is zero, then you're at the bottom rung of capital gains taxes, which is like 10 to 15 percent. So Unbelievable. That's, why, that's, the, that's the way the system works. So when people go and say, hey, we're going to do tax cuts, it's like, yeah, we're going to do tax cuts for all the people who have the money, the knowledge, and the CPAs to game the system. And we're going to leave their stuff alone. And we're going to make sure that all the people who are wage earners pay for those cat, tax cuts. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we, we got to talk. <laughs> it takes a, a bit of capital to get started doing this because you got to pay for the upkeep of a corporation and pay a CPA to do all the books for you because there's no way that, you know, I'm going to keep up with all those books without screwing something up, getting audited, and then getting landing in jail. <laughs> <laughs> We'd bail you out. We'd have a village collective. <laughs> bail out our rich friend. Uh... The whole village shows up at the jail. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, M fan well, will show I just, up. I, I just realized that with Trump coming in and with the plan that he had for the tax plan to drop the corporate tax rate from 35 to 21 percent, well, at the time he was saying 15 percent. I was like, well, I better get in on this. Because, <laughs> you know, it just might as well take advantage of it while I can. And so I started setting up that corporation two years ago and started selling my holdings off to the corporation that I own. Brilliant. Okay, Zonia, so, you're, you're going to you're gonna have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to call back and uh, that other discussion we we're supposed to have. <laughs> yeah. I forgot the but subject what, matter. How many, they're like, at least two of them that were backlogged on now. Right, right. We will. We we're going to talk about the I'm not racist statement, and we we're going to talk about, uh, what was it? I was talking about the, um, oh, the injustice that people feel when they leave Christianity. Yeah. It's a very interesting discussion. For sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, BM fan, do you have, do you have any uh, last words about the economy? Um, I think, uh, Zonia expressed a lot of the things that I was kind of expressing. Um, obviously, you know, significantly better, you know, more intelligent manner. Uh, but yeah, I, I pretty much agree with uh, most of the things she said. So you're retracting that unemployment, uh, higher unemployment is good for the economy. Um, I did see one guy post in the in the chat earlier uh, regarding that unemployment thing, um, kind of saying that like. What um, the way that the guy said it in, in the chat was, you can have, you know, hire like twenty part timers as opposed to having like five full timers. Yeah, there. Are, so there are a couple of different ways of looking at that. At that, if you want, we can dig into that. I don't know how much time you guys got. Go ahead. I, I, I'm curious to hear. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so I used to work with a guy who had that belief he was a libertarian actually and uh 
he felt that a, an economy where you had a higher unemployment rate had a couple of benefits. One, you can cycle through. So companies have the ability to hire more people, first of all. There's more people in the pool, right? And you can cycle through people a little more readily. It gives you the ability to, for companies to kind of spring up, hire people, get what they need done, and it allows a pool to be replenished. And so you basically have what's called, I forget the term for it, there's a name for it where it's like, it's like, it's like employment flexibility or, or pool, I don't remember, there's a, there's a term for it, so that you always have room to grow the economy as long as that there are more people available and ready to work. Like right now, one of the problems we have in tech is that we have difficulty hiring people. One of the reasons why we're a big supporter of using the H-1B is because we need a bigger pool of people to pull from. There aren't, uh, you know, 80 million engineers in the, in the world or in the U.S. that are qualified to do these jobs. So we need a bigger pool to pull from. So we need to find people that are available and we need to reach out beyond our borders to do that, to find qualified candidates. So we have to reach into India, China, et cetera. And when the economy is doing as well as it is right now, we have a lot of difficulty finding those people because they're all hired and they're all doing, situated fairly well. They're making decent income and they don't want to move. And so our position, our ability to grow our products becomes a little bit stagnant. We're pressured. We're putting more stress on the employees. You got to work longer hours, harder, crank out more results because we don't have the people we need to do it. And we're feeling that right now in my company. So that's one of the major arguments for having a higher unemployment, you know, a number of unemployed people per capita, depending on your industry. So, so that's, it, it, that's it, probably the most convincing argument that I have heard. It but at the same time, you kind of want to make sure that people aren't sitting stagnant for a long time as well. Right. I let let the corporation solve that their own problem. Don't on don't have a bunch of people unemployed so that you can have a yeah. a better pool. What the hell? Right. That's such a pro uh, uh, corporatist position to hold, BM fan. I'm surprised. <laughs> Yeah, BM fan, did you hear any other approach to that? Because I've heard people use other types of arguments for that. Uh, the, the one I just gave is the one that was the most convincing that I had heard, and I've heard most often. Um, I'm sure I have. The problem is, like, I just I can't, uh, um, like, bring up anything concrete. Okay, yeah. so one last thing, like, Zonia. Like, like, I'm, uh, I'm not really, like, you know, big into economics and whatnot. That's all right. That's why we got Zonia. I'm not huge into it, but I'm involved in the economy, so I have, I'm forced to pay attention to it, even though I'm not a fan of this. This is what happens economics. when you're a capitalist pig. So according <laughs> according to the according to Fox News, the Dems have already taken the House. This is no, they're projecting that they're going to win. Y yes, Fox. It says Dems take House. Fox News projects Democrat. They, they got uh, Feinstein there. They got Maxine Waters. <laughs> God Gosh, almighty. That's all we need. <laughs> they, <laughs> they need some youth, man. <laughs> Golly. Uh, and it says Fox News projects Democrats will capture House of Representatives. So uh, what do you guys think that that's going to do? Practically Scary speaking. Thought. I'm, oh, my God. Are you afraid? Are you afraid, Leah? <clears throat> I don't think it's going to do anything good. Let's just put it that way. What about you, BM fan? Do you think it's going to have any real effect on us? I don't think it's going to benefit the country. I mean, if what if we take the house? Well, I'm 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 not on your team. I'm not on Leah's team either. <laughs> um, I mean, the, I mean it varies. I mean, obviously, like, it's it's a good thing, obviously, but the question is, is how much of a good thing is it? And I'm not entirely sure. Um, unfortunately, like, we, the people we ran for Senate were just utter trash. They were, um, 
well paid by corporations that that's, uh, a certain way. that's very accurate there you go <laughs> what, what about what, of, what about you Zonia establishment Dems who just start obviously not going to do well what about you Zonia what, what do you think is going to happen uh, if the uh, Democrats have control of the house uh, I think they're going to do what they've been doing and play it safe so they're not going to do too many aggressive liberal policy pushes they're uh, they're kind of notorious for playing it safe these past ten years or so, and that's been a losing battle for them because there's a lot of fervor on the left for actually taking action and having candidates that people are inspired about, and that's just not happening. So we're getting a little bit of it, but the Democratic establishment still controls the party. And they're going to probably make sure that a lot of the moves are very tiny increments, if anything. So they're going to play it safe. So I think, Leah, you're probably going to be okay. We'll see. I mean, out of, I, I'm actually legit. Nothing is the first yet. Why, um, why are you so scared of Dems? I'm not scared of Dems in particular. I'm just. Oh, why, why, what what Democratic policies are you terrified of? I'm more pro Republican policies. The Democrats like, don't really have any policies name, running on that problem. But, but name some. <clears throat> they don't have any. Their whole policy is hate Trump. That's it. I... <laughs> they do have sort of a stance these days that, hey, we're not as bad as that guy over there. Right. So not a winning game. They, they definitely do. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Which is, have, which is why a lot of, like, the establishment... Heard any policies from them. So it depends on which Democrat you're talking about. There there are some, like, Pelosi has no policy structure of any kind <laughs> other than just... She's yeah, a those, those establishment ones. <laughs> yeah. But well, you look at people like, uh, you know, certain in- individuals, like, uh, like Kamala Harris. She's, you know, new God, to... I can't stand her. Do you know what her policies are? I cannot stand her. What are her policies? <laughs> I I do know what her policies are. Honestly, I don't know what her policies are. As a person, I cannot stand her. Really? What yeah. is that? Her demeanor, the like every time I ever see her in any like Senate hearing or whatever, just her attitude and her holier than thou kind of ugh. Is it about, uh, I cannot stand her, I'm sorry. What about someone like Tulsi Gabbard? Chelsea Gabbard. I don't Tulsi know. Tulsi Gabbard, Hawaii. Tulsi. Yeah, she's Hawaii. Uh, oh, the old Hawaiian lady? No, she isn't old. She's, no, she's, she's quite young. young. Oh, okay. Not familiar with her, honestly. See, that's kind of... So, so I, I don't know about... It, it sounds to me like the M fan, you probably keep up with a lot of details about politics i try and watch both sides i don't necessarily f- f- sit in the middle i'm more left-leaning but i i try to look at everybody's policies if i can and from what i can tell when it comes down to republican or democrat generally the establishment really doesn't have much of a way of a policy other than make sure that we continue winning and Make sure that our donors get all their money back and then some. I mean, that's, I'll fully agree with that. that. I mean, that goes for both sides. Yeah, so when it comes down to the people that, like I just named off, as well as the M fan named off, these are people who generally try to stand up against the establishment approach, sort of. I mean, in some ways, Tulsi Gabbard and Kamala Harris both have taken money from big donors so we don't know if we can totally trust them, but they've at least said that they don't stand for the the typical traditional establishment of catering to the big donors. Yeah, so but what are what are them. what are Kamala Harris's uh, policies that you that are attractive to you, Zonia? So she wants to implement something like Medicare for all or a single payer health care program, and she wants to. 
get money out of politics as well. So that's, at least she's paid lip service to that. We don't know about her actions just yet. So right. those are two really important policies for me because I know tons of people who have had struggles throughout their life trying to get the right kind of coverage and have been turned away. And I know people who have died from cancer that wasn't treated in enough, in readily enough because of the fact that they couldn't get the coverage for it initially. And, and I know people who have also been spent into the poorhouse paying emergency uh, visit bills because they can't get covered. And so they just ended up spending you know $15,000 for an emergency room visit when they could have done a preventative healthcare thing that was a lot cheaper in the long run. And so that's important, getting money out of politics. Currently, money controls the direction of our country and not in a good way. Now, as a capitalist, I'd say, hey, that's great, but it's not working out to the benefit of the majority of the country. It's working out to the benefit of the upper crust. And so when you feel frustrated that your representative isn't representing you properly, that's because somebody else is telling them, hey, you got to represent me first because I paid you, buddy. So you got to come back and make sure I get my tax cuts and make sure I get all my money and make sure that my company gets your government contracts, et cetera. So right. the only thing that they really end up representing us on are the wedge issues and the fringe issues. You know, it's like, hey, uh, you know, pro-life or you know, pro-choice, right. you know, or – Right. You get your guns, you don't get your guns, right? So they, they do the cheerleader thing to pretend that they're on your side. But when it comes down to the things that economically affect the direction of your life and your well-being, they're not representing us. Well, they're representing you. Well, <laughs> and, and they're also, you know, they may not necessarily get joy out of it, but I'm sure that they are doing just fine with the fact that the rest of us on the left and the right are just going after each other like crazy and kind of ignoring what the establishment are doing. So as long as we're distracted, picking at each other and fighting at each other, they get to continue tapping from our piggyback. That is the entire country's piggyback. Yeah, which, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this, right? It's very, very small beginnings, but that's the idea. Is that I always say, who benefits from us being at, a, at each other's throats? Okay, so now that you've heard Kamala Harris's uh, uh, perspective on those two issues, Leah, would you agree or disagree that those are good policies? I dislike her even more now. You do? <laughs> That's the joke, right? No, I'm serious. So getting money out of politics is is something that you feel. I buy that from her for a second. Are you kidding me? Okay. I don't buy that from her for a second. And the whole singer pair, single pair health thing, I don't know. I don't. Why? I don't think that would. I don't know. Okay, so. Sure, so there's got to be a better. There's got to be a better way. That's all. So I'm going to say to you exactly what I said to BM Finn. I, I think that your your emotions are clouding your objectivity, Leah. <clears throat> when it comes to her, that's entirely possible, and I will not be afraid to admit it. Oh my God, that is terrible. What is going on? And both of you can vote. I do not like her. I do not like her. I, everything I've seen of her is negative. I just Yikes. don't like her as a person. I've got a question for you. All right. Go for it. So, Leah, yes, what, dear. what media do you watch? What media do you think? I'm... Considering conservative. Yes. Do you watch left-wing media at all? I've tried to. So most people don't like doing this, and I totally understand why, because even I get pissed off when I watch right-wing media. But I watch them both. No, I tried watching, I've tried watching both, and I can't, because one's obviously... <clears throat> it's... Oh, my God. It's, it's terrible. Well, I, I watch them both, and I see a lot of things that are on both sides where they try and color situations. So, like, they present on the right wing, they'll present clips of people on the left wing in a manner that depicts them in their worst possible moment that everybody right. has. Right. They'll make sure that the only picture you get is the worst possible one. 
And right. the rest and of them does the exact about, same thing. I, I'm not saying the only impressions I've gotten from her are from right-wing media. I'm talking about from Senate hearings where I've watched the entire hearing. I've watched every single person ask their questions of whoever it was. And for some reason, she is always the one that stands out as being condescending, rude, and uh, just her attitude are, 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 in general. It's just, I don't are, like it. Are you it talking about, are you talking about the Kavanaugh thing? I mean, the, her, the way she behaved in that was terrible, yes. But, I mean, beyond that, there's multiple hearings I've seen her in, even where she was interviewing uh, when um, Kirsten Nielsen was being uh, confirmed for DHS secretary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, come so on. I, I see her was, like, pro-torture. Which one? Wasn't that the person that was, like, pro-torture? No, you're thinking of the uh, CIA. Yeah. Um, so I see Kamala's actions as being sort of the upstart who's fighting the establishment. So she does have a condescending attitude when she's in front of the, the Senate. And I, I've definitely witnessed that. But I saw it as more of a middle finger to the establishment. I'm not going to let you cut me off. I'm not going to let you, you know, silence me, etc. Because she kind of came in guns blazing to the Senate. So that's the way I saw that. Well, yeah, that was kind of the shtick, right? Is that there's a there's a growing, especially among millennial leftists, that the establishment is a is is the root of all evil. And so you gotta you gotta have somebody that goes in there and says uh, "f you" to the establishment. I'm just amazed, Leah, that you're okay with Trump's temperament, but you're not okay with Kamala Harris's temperament. Do you think that Trump is more of a congenial personality than Kamala Harris? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. Know. Maybe he's not. But I I I don't view him. I don't see the the arrogance in him that I see in her, I guess. What? <laughs> no. Leah. <laughs> I'm serious. You're j- Leah, Leah is trolling I, us. I, no, I'm serious. I Honestly, I think, I think what you see is what you get with him. I think he's very honest. I think I he think... is the way that uh, he, the way that you see him is the way that he is. And that's, there's multiple people that have said, as much about him for her i don't know it's something about her rubs me the wrong way i just don't like her I'm not a fan of hers you know I'm, she could be the most she could be a very great person i have no idea but as the politician or whatever you want to call it she just rubs me the wrong way leah let, let me ask a completely terribly politically incorrect question how much oh of this my God. How much of this is just because she's a woman and she's acting a certain way and men like Trump are allowed to be kind of that way, but women are are supposed to project a certain type of uh, deference? No, I don't think that's it at all, because there are plenty of female politicians that I don't have a problem with whatsoever. But I mean, like with Kamala's attitude, because to me, if I put Kamala Harris next to Trump. I mean, I could tolerate her much more than Cory Booker. I can't stand Cory Booker. I can't stand him either. But to Booker, to me, is what did he call himself? Zonia Spartacus? Spartacus, yeah. I mean, God almighty, help Booker us. Is very establishment. He's not good. Yeah. Help Booker us. La ilaha illallah. are getting cheaper medication from Canada because his, some of his biggest backers were Big Pharma. <laughs> okay yeah but but I, I don't know i just feel like <laughs> if, if a woman comes off strong and assertive then she gets held to a different standard than when a man because when trump is being belligerent and megalomaniacal you say oh that's that's 100 him well couldn't i say that that's 100 kamala that's how she is i don't know see i don't think that to me it just seems all for show all right. Um, 
that's just the way I that's just the way I see it. I mean, I could be absolutely wrong. I know there's people in the the village in the chat that like her, and you know that's fine. That's their opinion. They're entitled to support her or whatever. And I don't have a problem with you if you do support her. That's fine. I love people that support her. Um, it's just not you. I personally, she's just yeah. Like I said, she just something about her just rubs me the wrong way and I don't I I don't know if I can really convey a specific something but I think it's just her overall the way she carries herself and the way she behaves towards other people I just don't I don't care for it um I I got one thing that I think you should consider is that people born into a lot of money billionaires who own rich fancy resorts and have hotels around the globe and are doing businesses with entire countries do not act the way that Trump does at you know at his rallies so what you're seeing at the rallies that's not him Trump is not you and he's not me he's not the average person and he's born he's born into money now, so he's he sees himself as being better than other people in general. That's it's typical if you're born into a lot of money and you didn't have to associate with people who are of lower, uh, you know, or more modest means. He didn't have to. He didn't go to a school with people of you know more common means, and he was always highly, highly privileged. Does and I have like gold-plated uh, toilets. Yeah. Yeah, the tour of tour of his his big suite at the top of of Trump Tower is one yeah, of the most gaudy things I've ever seen. Right? Yeah. Oh, I would agree with that. So he's not a he's not a down to earth kind of you know blue collar buddy buddy and, and working person kind of buddy buddy person. That's what I, you see I, there. Is I, an act. I never said he was. But it's an act. You were saying that he's but, what he what you see is what you get. That's not that couldn't be him. Well, he's not saying I'm a man of the common people. What he's saying is we're going to win. I'm a competitor, and people have been putting America second, and I'm here to put America first. And that's why we're, you, you know, you're struggling the way that you're struggling. I mean, he's never been one to say that I'm relating to you as an individual. That's never been his shtick. His shtick is that, look, I'm, I'm rich and famous, and the reason I'm rich and famous is because I'm tenacious and I know how to handle business, and I'm going to take that same attitude into the White House on your behalf because I'm making your cause my cause, and now we're going to win because of me. Yeah, but when he's, talking, when he's talking about all these things related to uh, immigration and to the, the relationship between the left and the right, etc., the language that he's using is not it's it's not his kind of language it's not the language of, of a billionaire who is born into you know millions at the time and uh it's it's the language it's the same kind of pandering every politician does when they want to get your vote and stir up fervor so he's pandering just like everybody else does the thing is he's just not filtering his language so it sounds like he's being very realistic but the reality is he's pandering to you anyway because he knows that's what you want to hear. Okay. Let me give an update, guys. CNN has it as a 103 to 106 blue house and a 45 to 38 red Senate. Fox News has it as 49 to 40 red Senate, 101, no, sorry, 102 to 93 red house. Very, very interesting. interesting. <laughs> Good lord. Okay. They well, just called the uh, one of the one of the Senate races. Heidi Heitkamp, who did not vote for Kavanaugh. Uh, Kavanaugh. She lost her race. Ha <laughs> ha. So sad. <laughs> you are terrible. Okay. Uh, I really wish that Jen would call in. I'd love oh, to. I would love. I would love Jen to call in. I absolutely love Jen. She's seriously one of the nicest people you will ever meet. Yeah, Jen Jen is one of the best villagers ever. Okay, Zoe and Pony. 
Zonia, Zonia BM fan, uh, Leah, thank you very much. You guys are amazing. It was a good, that was a good one. I learned a lot. Thank you very much. I think, uh, yeah, thank you, BM fan, and thank you, Zonia. Thank you, Leah. I thank think Ocasio time. Cortez yeah. just won the Congress. She got elected to Congress, so good for her. Very nice. <clears throat> very nice. Very nice. Good work, guys. My final uh, thoughts are the Democrats win the House, the Republicans win the Senate, which everybody knew was going to happen. Uh, yeah. And the sky is not going to fall. Everybody take care of everybody. And we will see you guys at the next installment of the Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone. <laughs>